All right, so in this Photoshop 101 uh, tutorial video, we're gonna go over um, the layer panels blending modes. So the different things that you can do to your different layers um, to blend things together and make them look uh, different. So we're gonna start out obviously with the first one is gonna be normal blending mode. That's the, no that's the mode here that is default. Uh, every time you create a layer, it's just gonna be created in uh, normal blend mode. Uh, so nothing is going to look different than what the colors you've selected are. Um, so normal is just your standard basic uh, default. Uh, we'll go ahead and minimize that. So the next mode that we have is dissolve. Now we have the exact same image. I've just copied and duplicated um, this uh, normal uh, group up here and I've made a group for every single one of the colors down. So dissolve essentially is going to, you know, if we had normal we look like that. Dissolve is going to make it look like it's dissolving. It's pixelated. This is not a mode that I use very often uh, for the type of designs that I do. It, it can be useful. It's just not something that I use often, but that gives you an idea of what the dissolve mode does. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, the darken mode. So darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color all do very similar things. Uh, they all darken whatever the the color is. So we've got our circle here. Uh, I'm going to click the drop down, go back to normal, and you can see it's a little bit lighter. That's our uh, you know base color, the exact same one we had up in normal. And we go to the drop down menu, we go click darken. It's just going to darken that slightly. Um, how the blend modes work <coughs> is directly reflected by the layer that is underneath. Uh, what you're trying to blend. So that blue is blending with the gray um, and creates this slightly darker uh, blue tone here for you. So whatever this color is, if this was a green or something else, you would get a different blue, you would get a different color than what is shown here. Um, so everything is directly reflected by whatever is underneath. They are blend modes, blending the two uh, layers together with this one being on top blending into the base layer um, so multiply multiply almost has the exact same results as darken um, the difference between multiply and darken is uh, you can think of multiply similarly to like doing a pen stroke uh, on a piece of paper you do one stroke and you get the you know regular ink color you go over the top of it and it makes the ink darker and you go over the top of it again and it's darker again multiplies the same concept. Um, if you were to copy this, so I will um, hit Control J and it's going to duplicate that layer. You can see it obviously got darker and made the circle look almost bigger because all these faded edges also got darker which then represented that color in those. Um, so it, it works like that. It's, it's very similar to how Darken works. Um, the next one we have is Color Burn. Um, color burn again same kind of deal you've got um, darken and then you've got multiply and then you've got color burn color burn is going to give you obviously a little bit uh, more of a color burn you know that it's going to make the the blue stand out a little bit more blue made the circle the inner inner part of the circle um, a little bit larger here uh, burn more of that color into that gray background um, and then you have linear burn Linear burn, again, same. Um, you've got color burn, linear burn made it even darker. Um, it just burns that blue into the, the gray background um, just to make it stand out and pop a little bit more. And then the last one you have here is gonna be darker color. Now darker color, this one's not showing up um, nearly as well. Sorry, let me pop in here and click that. Um, it doesn't darken the actual color so much. So you've got normal here and then you have uh, darker color which seem to be almost the same. I would say the difference between these two um, would really show if we had a different color background than this gray. Uh, if this gray background was say um, a darker color it would reflect more on the base color so the background color in the color that you're doing so that background color is not coming through that well because it's a light colored background um, but that's what would change that um, lighten lighten is going to lighten it quite a bit so this next section here 
you've got light and screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and linear color. Um, all of these things are going to lighten it. So similarly to how the last section darkened, that's what these are going to do. So um, that obviously made our standard normal blue extremely light. Um, screen, same deal. So screen is going to lighten it again quite a bit. We've got our normal, we've got lighten, and then we've got screen. Screen lightened it even more than the lighten did. What that's doing is it's screening this background color. So if this color was a little bit darker, uh, it wouldn't make it as bright. Um, but it's always going to result in a lighter color no matter what, unless you um, have a black background. If you have a black background, this blue is going to stay the exact same color as it was if it was normal. Um, and then if you sh had a white background, a completely white background, screen would come up completely white. So it would only reflect that light color background. So screen is, is directly correlated to whatever color the background image is, um, not so much the image that you're actually screening. You've got color dodge. Um, color dodge is going to do that. It's going to um, take the the two colors. So the you've got the image color and then you've got the background color. And it's going to look at the, the different stuff that's in those and it's going to brighten uh, the base color. So the color that's behind this to blend with um, the, the, the actual color of the circle. Um, and it's going to de decrease the contrast between the two. So it's going to make it look more, more so like the background, but it's not going to um, make it completely gray. Um, if you um, have a black background here, it's going to produce no change. It's not going to change at all. So um, you definitely can't use a black background and then use color dodge. Uh, the next one here, we've got linear dodge add. So that one there again very similar to the rest of them you've got lighten screen color dodge linear dodge add um, that one there is going to be the same as color dodge pretty much except for um, instead of decreasing the contrast between the two things it, it just adds a little bit of brightness to it so you can see that went from still being kind of a blue there in the middle to this being almost a white in the middle where most of the color is focused on that circle um, so that just you know brightens it then you have uh, lighter color uh, lighter color it um, you know if we had our our blue uh, I've actually kind of messed with this a little bit here I'm gonna go ahead and delete that layer and then I will um, hold down alt over the top of this one and I'm gonna drag it into here and that's gonna duplicate it for me um, I will rename this lighter color so that everything kind of stays you know, organized like we talked about in the last video and then I'll go ahead and click on lighter color um, and that eliminates it completely I think that's because we've got you know this blue color is not very dark and then our background is not very dark so it's gonna blend those two modes together you want you want good contrasting colors um, for lighter color to work but you'll be able to mess with that it does like I said the same we're still in that section of the lightening area. So all of those things will lighten. <clears throat> um, the next little section we have here is overlay. Uh, overlay is good for um, adding textures, uh, just different texture to things. It's hard to see you know, in here what it's really doing um, just because it's a solid blue. But overlay is really good for uh, if you had one color background or one pattern background, so this was like a brick wall background, and then you clicked on overlay, it would overlay the the uh, screen colors and or the patterns um, and fill in the highlights and the shadows uh, to create darker colors. So if we had, you know, let me actually see if I can go to it. So we'll change this um, to a you know, a pattern background. So let's go ahead and double click it there and we'll add a pattern to it and we'll make the pattern um, scroll all the way down to the bottom and we'll use one of the leather patterns that I've created. Um, 
and see if we can kind of get an idea. Yeah, we'll go with that. So <laughs> if we had our um, normal on, you're not going to see any of those textures inside of it. Uh, it's just a solid here and then when it fades out you can begin to see the textures. If you click the drop down menu and you click on overlay it's going to allow you to see all of the little textures through it and look like that is literally on it. Overlay is one of the one of the, the blend modes that I use most often because it allows you to make things look like they're on something. So like this leather, you know, if you if you typed out, you know, a name or something and you clicked overlay, you know, we may even just go up to the text here and uh, it may not work that well because it's a black text. Um, but we click overlay. So say we wanted to change the text color, we'll change the text color to uh, match this blue. And then we set it to overlay. And it makes it look like you can still see the pattern below it and underneath it. So overlay, probably the most important blend mode that you will find um, in this, this little section here. Um, the next uh, thing is going to be soft light. Um, for soft light, uh, we're actually going to go and do the exact same thing we just did on the last one. And we'll probably fill out the rest of this section doing this. So we're going to double click on the outside. And uh, I'll go to pattern overlay. And it's going to pre select the one that I've already, you know, that I previously selected. And I'm going to go over in another video, probably the next one what I'm doing there opening up that that second uh, little tab when I double click because that is the uh, heart of the layers uh, panel um, but we'll go ahead and click on soft light soft light is going to do similarly to what overlay does everything in this section is going to do similar to that it's just going to be a little bit softer you know you don't notice it it's not as vibrant as um, what overlay does so it's going to just be a little bit more subtle um, the next, the next one we're going to jump into is going to be hard light. So again, we'll double click that. It'll open up this and we'll do that and click OK. And then we'll do our drop down and we'll go to hard light. Now hard light isn't going to show as much through. Um, it, it's, it's an OK one. I don't use this one a whole lot. It, it doesn't... Um, give you as much of a uh, see-through to it but it's it's not a bad option this section from overlay down to hard mix are all of the uh, you know the most used sections for the blending options um, vivid light will be the next one and these all just kind of give you an idea of what they do vivid light you can't really see any of the mill through it but it did change the, um, actually I didn't even click it. So let's go ahead and click on Vivid Light. Um, it didn't change a whole lot. It's not a very clear, crisp one. And this may you know, be affected differently if we weren't using such a contrasting color from this blue to this gray. And you know, if we had a little bit better color here, it might work a little bit better. Um, but vivid light I don't use a whole lot just because it does give you these real vivid strange odd colors when you're doing it um, and then the next one we have is going to be linear light uh, so we'll double click here add that leather pattern to the background and then we'll change the blue spot to linear light um, linear light, not as much shining through here in the in the in the center of it, um, and then the lighter the outside gets um, of the blue circle, you'll start to see more of that uh, texture through it. Um, increases the brightness here in the middle a little bit. Uh, not one that I use a whole lot. And then we've got pin light. Pin light. We'll go ahead and add the pattern to it. Click OK. Um, and then do our drop down here to go to pin light and pin light is going to um, 
replace a little bit so it's not going to burn the colors in like the past few did it's going to replace the color based on the uh, bottom layer so instead of it being blue it's now kind of made it purple so it's shown the gray through the blue a little bit more change that blue to purple and then you still get a little bit of that um, uh, dark and highlight areas of the leather that shine through it uh, pin light I don't use a whole lot either just because you know when I have a color and I want to do a, an overlay on it I want to add something to it I don't want it to be changing the the actual color that I'm using so I don't use it a whole lot um, and then we've got hard mix and hard mix in my opinion is probably the worst one of them all um, so we'll just add that leather pattern here and then we'll scroll down to we'll click hard mix there and we'll scroll down to hard mix and it gives you like an extremely harsh vibrant color that comes through and then you get just real choppy pixelated it's not a great uh, tool I guess if you're making some kind of like um, you know space scene or something like that or space background it might be good because you know it kind of looks like you've got like a glowing orb or ball here with the texture showing through it a little bit but not a great one for me I don't think um, and then we'll jump into the next little section so this next little section starts off with difference uh, difference is literally going to uh, take the difference of the two colors it's going to subtract uh, the base color from the blend color and then it's going to it's going to um, you know switch things up so it, it's flipping that blue completely to a green color so it's taking all of that gray color out of the 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 blue and you can kind of see it you know what I'm talking about if you click the color wheel you've got um, RGB whatever value that the gray has so you know this gray has that value blue of 119 it's essentially stripping that you know if I click on the gray actually um, it's a stripping this out of the value of the blue um, difference is junk uh, there's no need for this tool at all in anything I've ever done in Photoshop um, you know making photos look super weird I suppose but this is one of the, the most useless ones that, I've, uh, that they have um, exclusion is going to exclude the colors so similar to how difference works um, it did the exact same thing that difference did except for instead of you know flipping those colors around it, it's excluded those colors and it just gives you this light green crap again it's something that's not used for pretty much anything that I've ever come across um, and then subtract same kind of deal it's going to give you a an odd sorry I didn't click inside of it uh, it's going to give you an odd um, you know green shape just because the colors we're using contrasting wise we got the gray background and the blue and it's just subtracting that uh, base color from the blue not great divide same deal this section here sorry this section here is um, the by far the least used um, sorry, divide got a little lost there um, eliminates the the blue completely um, changes the, the colors of everything it, it doesn't seem worth it to me if you wanted to add a little yellow square or a yellow circle inside there you're better off just stamping a yellow circle in there the divide is not going to be a great uh, tool um, hue saturation color and luminosity those are the last four sections there those ones are actually used uh, I do use those uh, quite a bit um, but not in the blend mode section I'll show you later on in another video where these are used or modified um, but essentially it's going to um, blend the two hues together and it eliminates that that blue almost completely because those things here have a we'll double click over here um, a hue that are that are very close to each other so the blue is is um, I don't know exactly where it's at it's right here so it's a 248 and the 
the gray has got um, a close one too. So like it, it's going to blend the two and it eliminates it. Now if you have contrasting colors, different colors, um, that hue is not always going to eliminate it, but in this case it does. Um, and then you've got saturation and the saturation is going to, with these two colors, also eliminate it completely. Um, but saturation is good for, you know, changing a color if it, if you want it to be less saturated, more of a, like a gray tone or something like that. Um, it'll it'll give you gray tone, but because our background here is gray, um, it, it's just going to completely eliminate. You know, if we, you know, actually it don't work if I click that out because we've still got luminosity and color showing. But if we were to get rid of that gray, um, the saturation would would allow us to see that blue most likely. Um, and then we've got color. Color is going to um, just give us a little bit lighter color, so it's going to um, take the base color back here and it's going to blend it with the blue and um, it's going to preserve all of the gray tones that are in the blue which you know the background here is gray so it's going to it's going to lighten that up and it's going to make it look a little bit lighter but all of these modes here will vary based on you know what your background looks like if it's a solid color if it's a pattern and then what color you're trying to blend um, we'll go ahead and minimize that and the last one is luminosity and luminosity is just going to um, give you a color based off of um, the mix between uh, the hue and the saturation of this and the base color so it's gonna go you know it's gonna make it um, if we were just to go sorry let's go back and make this normal and then we'll click on just this and the luminosity it's gonna give us is that so like it changes it to black if the background was a different color the luminosity may change to a different um, different color there but Overall, that is the basis of the blend modes. Um, now, like I said, the most common blend mode that you will use is going to be overlay. Um, any, pretty much anything in this little section, with the exception of hard mix. Uh, hard mix is not a great one, but um, those ones are all really great. Everything does have its purpose. Um, and then occasionally in certain videos when I go through, you know, you'll notice that I use a certain blend mode and you'll see the different effects in it. But as just a basic overview, I know this video is quite longer than most of the other ones, but it's a lot of stuff to cram into one little section. But just to give you an idea, going through all of those things, you're able to see kind of the changes that they made with this specific color set, the same background, same um, circle on it. But uh, the next section that we'll go over uh, is going to be these next little tips and tools here. And then we'll hit the bottom probably in that same video. And then after that, uh, the basics will be pretty much done. And we can jump into a few of the other topics that you guys have requested and uh, get all those videos out. So we'll see you in the next video um, talking about the rest of the layers panel.